Hello, assalamu alaikum to everybody who is watching me. Welcome back to my show, the uh, Dr. S show. So today I have a very, very, very um, special person. <laughs> I found it after around 15 years or something, or maybe more than that, uh, on one of the YouTube channels he's running. So he's a very special person because <laughs> he is one of uh, our fraternity of uh, medicine and, you know, so he's Dr. Naj Sumro, actually Dr. Najib Sumro, but he called himself Naj nowadays because he is currently living in Australia. <laughs> so uh, I would just like to give a brief intro about him. So Dr. Najib Sumro is a dual occupational physician and GP trainee, and he's a special interest in medical research and sports medicine. And he was born and raised in Pakistan, Karachi, Apna Karachi. <laughs> so Dr. Sumra grew up playing cricket and he's a former captain of the Dow Medical University cricket team in Pakistan. Um, and after graduating from Pakistan in 2010, he moved to Australia and he has done his master's in public health and a PhD in sports medicine. And in, currently he's working in Australia. He's living there for now 10 years and he is full-time in clinical practice. And along with that, he's done many philanthropic works. He's also running one of the YouTube channel that's got called Outback, um, Outback Doctors in Australia. So it's just kind of a channel that can help uh, doctors who want to move to Australia. Uh, so I will just welcome him uh, to my show. And first we'll go and uh, just have a chit chat because I'm seeing him after so many years. So I have to talk in a very non-formal way initially, and then we'll go in a formal way. <laughs> So, uh, welcome, Najib. How are you? Sara, great to uh, hear from you. Great to see you after probably a dozen years, uh, yeah. if, if not more. Um, yeah. And thank you very much for inviting me to your show. Um, happy, happy to be here. And thank you very much for the generous introduction. I tried my best to give the best introduction, but I was, I'm super excited to know, you know, because it's like internet has made people to come close, you know, after 12 years, I'm seeing you almost <laughs> perfect thank you thank you so tell me how how is life and how is everything going on at your side yeah pretty good pretty good life uh, life has been good uh, over here uh, obviously with uh, any new moves you have a little bit of an initial struggling phase mm. Uh, but if you mm. work hard, you, you settle in, and then once you settle in, then things go smoothly. Mm. Uh, so that's how it is. At the, uh, at the moment, as you said, I'm mm. doing uh, dual training, and I've, I've been in, heavily involved in clinical work, so happy to have a chat about that. Yeah, so uh, you can see my background. I'm super excited because Australia is known for beaches and all, so I put that <laughs> background, especially for this program, you know. So tell absolutely, me how... absolutely. At the moment, it's actually winter over here, so it's, it won't be as sunny oh. as there. Oh, I'm sorry for that. But it's sunny here in Ireland. So if you want to come to Ireland, then take some sun bath here. <laughs> Brilliant. That's unusual for Ireland, but that's good that, that you have that well. Yeah. So tell me, Najib, how, like, um, uh, so basically, you know, today my, our purpose of this program is uh, to guide our doctor, you know, doctors who, are, who want to go to Australia, who are currently from, living in Pakistan or Middle East or Ireland, UK, USA. So it's basically a wide thing that, you know, for specific, specifically for those people who want to, you know, move to Australia because of their family purposes or because they really want to go to Australia. You know, sometimes there's a choice of life that, okay, okay, we are in Middle East, but we want to go there because of like, family reunion and different things. I know some of my friends because they were, struck, they were struggling for AMC, so they could not uh, get it. And I have few friends that I know they then they, they they were in Middle East, they came to UK and Ireland and now still struggling because they want to go to Australia. So my purpose my purpose for this program was to help uh, you know those people who really wish to go to Australia. Although I know that Irish people love to go to Australia because lots of money there, lots of US, oh, sorry, Australian dollars there. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> uh, I think more than that, they actually like going to the beach. So, so they, they, they tend to flock over here. Yeah, I think beach plus money makes it attractive. <laughs> I agree. 
Yeah. So tell me, like, uh, let's, let, what do you say? We will go with a different pathways, you know, to come to Australia, specifically, like, uh, we will start from the base, like, after completing your MBBS, let's suppose we have done, everybody, you know, from Pakistan, we have done from Pakistan. So tell me if, if like, if it's a, somebody's a fresh graduate, so what will be the first way if he, if, he, if he or she is thinking that, okay, we have to come to Australia? So what do you think is the quickest way to come and, um, and what will be the, uh, uh, you know, the shortcuts and pros and cons, you know? Yeah, thanks, Anna. Um, what I'll do is I'll break it down into three segments. So okay. uh, essentially, there are three pathways of coming to Australia. So uh, the three registration pathways are standard pathway, competent pathway, and specialist pathway. So if you are a young graduate, uh, then you come under the standard pathway, particularly if you have worked in Pakistan, India, and the subcontinent region. Uh, there is another pathway, which is competent pathway. Again, that is for new graduates, but those who have got experience in equivalent countries, which means UK, Ireland, Canada, uh, America, and so on. Uh, so obviously, if, if we are going to target for someone who has graduated in, in the subcontinent and they want to come over here, then the way to go about it is first finish your house job. And then you would apply for uh, the AMC exam. AMC exam has two parts. So you do part one. After part one, you are eligible to apply for a job and you apply for a job as a resident. The, the issue with that is uh, there is quite a bit of competition here in Australia. So it's quite challenging to get a job. Uh, the, the vacancies are quite less. Uh, so pe generally people who have either part two or have equivalent country experience uh, get the job easier. Uh, coming to the equivalent country experience, so I hear that it's a lot easier to get a job in UK, Ireland. So a lot of doctors that actually do uh, do their lab or equivalent exams moving to UK or Ireland. If you work there for one year, then you can come to Australia directly without doing any exams, mm -hmm. um, as long as you've covered the exams on those countries, and then you can easily get a job over here. So those are the main pathways for younger doctors. The third pathway is a specialist pathway. So if you've done your specialization, your FRA, CGP, or fellowship exams in um, Pakistan, uh, then you can obviously come, come like FCPS. So you can obviously come here as a specialist, but then uh, that's a different ball game. So in terms of answering the details of this question, if you are interested in a lot more details, what I'll do is I'll send you links to my videos mm -hmm. where I've specifically talked about in detail about each and every pathway, and mm -hmm. we can tag it down in the description of this video yeah. so people can then uh, have more information on it. Yeah, can, can take the details from there. But I just want to interrupt you for a thing. I know that AMC is the thing, but I know people, like, uh, they struggle a lot in the second part, you know, and uh, then there is, I think there is work, place-based assessment kind of, is it easier to get workplace-based assessment at, at like now in Australia? Or do you think that it is good to go for PLAB? Because I think now PLAB one we, uh, part one, we can give at Pakistan and then the clinical, we have to go to UK to give that. You think that comparatively AMC is harder and PLAB is easier to get? And then what do you say about that? Yeah, uh, again, an excellent question. And I've actually made a detailed video on that as well. And I'll flick you the link on that. Um, mm. uh, I've, uh, in that video, I've again explained and the short answer is yes, uh, do, do the PLAP. It's a lot easier than AMC. AMC is one of the most difficult exams in the world uh, with a very low passing rate. So the clinical exam has a passing rate of between 10 to 15%. Mm -hmm. So henceforth, it's quite challenging. The reason why it's challenging is that a lot of people who apply for the clinical exam haven't worked in Australia. And in Australia, there are certain ways of doing things which are different from other countries. And mm -hmm. therefore, without working in Australia, it's difficult to pass that exam. Similarly, the WPA program, I've again made a video on that. I will share, share it with you guys uh, in the link. Uh, that is again very difficult to get into because of high demand and they're very limited places. So, uh, so uh, ideally, the short answer is that go to the UK or Ireland and then come over here. But you know, the thing is that, and, and I would say at the moment, I would say UK is a good market to, uh, uh, you know, to for the new uh, doctors because they can easily give lab one. And then I know with the COVID, so the circumstances are a little different uh, because of the COVID nineteen. You know, it's difficult to go for the clinical part. Uh, but I think now they are conducting. So I think uh, the better idea would be, as you are saying, to go to UK. Okay, and also to get some, uh, you know, experience, at least one year experience, as you are saying, and then go for it. And tell me about the IELTS or OAT. Do they have to give or there's an exemption for that if they have worked in uh, UK 
or Ireland, is there any way? There is no exemption. So you have to give, uh, as long as your primary degree is from Pakistan, you will have to give the IELTS, PD, or OET. And what is the score, the uh, score they need to get it? Like so 7.5? it needs to be seven, 7 each in IELTS and equivalent in uh, whatever the equivalency is for the exams. Okay, and OAT, I think B, B score, right? Are they accept I'm OAT? actually not sure. I'm, I'm actually not sure on the score on OAT, but whatever is equivalent to IELTS 7, mm. that will be the accepted. Mm. And uh, the, yeah, so the other other way I could say that those uh, those doctors who want to come to Ireland, they uh, you know, the fresh graduates, they can try the exemption route, uh, like uh, uh, to come to Ireland and to start working here. And then if you get two years experience uh, in Ireland, meanwhile, you're completing your PLAB, then you can uh, get, gain uh, and uh, there's a kind of a certificate that you, you can uh, get it from uh, Ireland that you're working in an English speaking country. So you will get uh, exemption from the IELTS for, for GMC, I think. But if you have done MRCPCH, but for the PLAB, you have to get OATB and or IELTS 7.5 overall. So you can see in the in their website what they what they want. But that's I'm sure if you're going for the PLAB, you need IELTS or OAT. And if you're going for MRCPCH exam, then if you're working for two years in Ireland, uh, then you will easily get exempted uh, from IELTS and you can easily get GMC. And once you get the GMC, of course, if you want to go to Australia, you can uh, directly apply as Najib is telling us. So that's uh, one way. And tell me now those like us, like I am the middle grade doctor, I'm working as a registrar in Ireland. So tell me, uh, there are many doctors that I know are on the middle grade and if they are uh, approaching for uh, for their new journey to start in Australia. So what what kind of advice you will give to them and what, what are the options for, for open for them in Australia? What do you say, Najib? Uh, brilliant question, Sana. First, first of all, thank you very much for sharing the insight on the system in um, Ireland. And I think uh, we need to make another video later on. on yeah, on we, we will. We will. But we'll, yeah. we'll, keep it, we'll keep it as a separate topic. Uh, yeah. As far as you're concerned, when you say the middle grade doctors, I'm assuming doctors who've got three to five years of experience or, uh, or five to 10 years of experience, but haven't done their fellowships. So yeah. those doctors are actually quite a bit in demand in Australia. The system uh, here is such that uh, these doctors who are applying for non-trainee registrar positions, that those are the middle tier positions, say between five, three to seven years of experience if you have postgraduate in medicine without a specialization, you can easily get jobs over here. Um, particularly if you have got equivalent country experience, so I would highly encourage those doctors coming in from overseas, uh, especially UK, Ireland, to apply for registrar positions. And uh, uh, and if if the, you have any doubts, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put put my email address uh, mm -hmm. and and my details down there. Happy mm -hmm. to assist you in the process. The process is actually a lot more simpler because those doctors are in demand, so you can easily get jobs. I know that every year from Ireland, at least 200 doctors come to Perth, Western Australia. And that's that's just one city where, where these doctors come and work here for a couple of years, get experience and go back. Mm -hmm. So Irish doctors are looked upon very favorably. The job market is easy. In fact, I was having a chat with one of my Irish friends who's a doctor over here. He, uh, she actually got the job over here without even an interview. So so that's the market market position. And, and I understand from them is the salary is quite uh, it's a lot better over here uh, as compared to the and compared to the work hours as well. So yeah, absolutely. Highly uh, encourage you mm -hmm. to come over here and mm -hmm. seek jobs. But I would say like, you know, most of the most of the doctors nowadays, they're coming from exemption route to Ireland. So they have not given the press exam. So I think that for them, it is important that at least they complete their membership or PLAB, then they might be thinking, you know, like in my scenario, I'm going for MRCPCH exam. So let's suppose take my scenario. So if I if I if I've completed my MRCPCH exam, and I am like five years working in Ireland. So what will be my status to apply in Australia? Like, can I, can I apply easily or I have no, to go question. for AMC? That's a good, good question, uh, Sana. So you have to have a primary entry exam from a country where you're coming from. So if you are in Ireland, you need to have that press exam. If you're in the UK, you have to have a lab exam or you have to have, to have the AMC exam. Unfortunately, MRCP is not an alternative to those exams. So mm -hmm. if you enter, I'm not sure when you went to uh, Ireland, mm -hmm. you had to do the press or not. If you haven't done the press, mm -hmm. then you will have to do either the press or the PLAB to get an exemption from AMC. Otherwise you do the AMC. 
But if I come, let's suppose I've completed my MRC research and I go in the training, okay, and I complete my training in Ireland or UK or whatever, as a in pediatrics or GP or whatever X Y Z. So then, uh, do I have to give any specialist exam later on, or I can easily go in the pathway, like equivalent pathway, and start my uh, work there in Australia? What do you say about that? Sure. So then you will come in a separate pathway, which I initially at the start of the video, I said there are three pathways. So mm -hmm. number one is the standard. Number two is the competent and number three is the specialist pathway. So if you've done your specialist training, then you will come fall under the third category of specialist pathway. And you can come here directly as a specialist. So you will have to give no exams. However, most specialities would want you to work at least one year under supervision. And then yeah. if sometimes if your performance is uh, up and down, they might ask you to give the exam. But most of the time from equivalent countries, you are trained at such a high level that mm. the performance is good and then you'd be able to get full fellowship. So no exams if you've done your specialist training. Okay. And if I have done a specialist training, so is it like one year you are saying that we have to work there? And is it a provis provisional registration we'll get from Australia, isn't it? So and the way it works is you get specialist registration. Mm -hmm. That specialist registration may have a subcategory of specialist provisional mm -hmm. registration. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you complete that one year of satisfactory work, then mm -hmm. you're good. However, I've actually made a video on the specialist pathway as well. So mm -hmm. make sure you uh, Yeah, link, we will do link. that. Yeah. So that, because then, that we will can, be more detailed. More yeah. yeah. Yes, correct. T tell me about like um, okay, so if uh, you has, you have told me different parts and how is like uh, uh, what I would say is that we have done the three pathways. Now I think uh, that was a good information. So we will I think we will continue our next segment in our next part of the video. So I will complete this session and I think it, we will keep it short and we'll go to the next session. So then in that session, we're gonna discuss like uh, from, from the next point of view that you know how to get the job you have discussed, the three pathways you have discussed, and then we will go about like, uh, you know, when you get the job, what are the different things you are facing and what, what is the work environment and different things. So I will, I will, please guys stay tuned and we'll get back to Najib in the next short video because I don't want people to get bored. <laughs> so we'll, yeah, good we'll, idea. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We'll, uh, knock, yeah. knock over there. Yeah. So I will stop it now. So stay tuned guys and see the next video. Okay. Take care. Okay. Now let's stop.